So that trance of fear, um, that's I think I want to pick up there because that's really what we're here for, isn't it? How do I stop this repeating cycle, the thoughts, the fear, the anxiety that's going on inside of me, kind of the obsessive sort of thinking, that tightness in the body, you know, whatever it may be. And Sats talked about the need for compassion and the need to, to, to be present with the fear. And so I, I'm calling it a, a sort of embodied acceptance. And acceptance, that's a tricky word. And I don't mean by acceptance that, okay, yes, I'm all good with what's happening in the world right now. Or yes, I accept the fact that, you know, I may have just lost my job or, you know, what's something that's happened to me. It's not like I love this. This is all for the greater good. Not that type of acceptance. What I mean is the acceptance of honestly feeling in this moment. You know, we have this habit that Sats talked about. We always turn away from ourselves. When the feelings get intense, when the sensations in our body get intense, we go into distractions, we go into shame, we feel that something is wrong with us. And so this embodied acceptance means noticing, like Sats said, noticing, okay, I'm in distraction, or noticing what's going on, and then coming back. That might mean that, you know, we put a hand on an area of tightness in our body. You know, maybe we feel into it. We notice the, the tension. We notice the beating heart. You know, right now I'm feeling it, you know, talking in front of all of you. You know, we, we, we feel in. We maybe notice that tension and we allow it to soften a bit. We listen. Something in me is worried right now. You know, for some of us it may feel like a, a small child or a feeling of vulnerability or there's some sort of aching that's happening in the body. And this listening, this slowing down, this connecting into ourselves opens our hearts to ourselves. You know, it opens us up to feeling and being able to be with our pain instead of that distraction. And for many of us, you know, embodying this, like really slowing down and embodying this, this breaks like not only a lifetime pattern, perhaps, but possibly generational, your family pattern, the, fam the pattern of, you know, pushing away sadness or that grief or fear. You know, all of us are okay usually with some feelings and not others. You know, we can feel anger, but we're not going to feel vulnerability. Or maybe we can feel sadness, but we're not going to feel like I can't do something or I feel... Um, you know, afraid or whatever it may be. There's some feelings that got accepted in our families and some didn't. And we learned as children in our families how to respond and feel to our feelings. You know, and as children, of course, we don't have that capacity to be with our body, you know, to be with our breath, to slow it down, to start to be able to digest and metabolize the sensations we don't have that full, it's called the prefrontal cortex, that front part of our brain that's so important for letting us feel curiosity, empathy, to be able to you know, stay present and listen when things get intense. And that's just not with yourself, but that's in any relationship. You know, fear comes up in relating to our partners, and then we want to run away or we want to go for chocolate or whatever. And so this front part of our brain that we only get to develop, you know, into our 20s, really, is what allows us to kind of turn back to ourselves and with some kindness, moment by moment, being with what's just right here in front of us. And the more that we're able to tune in and, and track and be with our feelings, to feel those waves, because all of our feelings... They just, they don't come on and stay. There's a wave to all of this. It comes in and then we can be with it and digest it. And then it, it fades away. And when we can stay present while feeling our ground over and over, moving in and out of these cycles of activation and deactivation, it starts to feel safe enough to open our hearts to our pain, to our grief. You know, to our sadness, you know, really any feeling. We're talking about fear today, but what Sats and I are talking about here, what we're working with here, it can apply to anything. It can apply to jealousy. It can apply to anger, grief, whatever it may be. 
but there's this delicate balance, you know, because right now your mind might be saying, what, it is crazy. You're telling me to sit and feel my fear. I want to run away from my fear. I don't want to feel this. What's that? What good is that going to do me? You know, that's going to feel horrible. That's going to lead me to depression. You know, our minds will come in with these fears. And, and when I mean this embodied acceptance, it's a, it's a balance between being with and not being flooded. And that window between being able to stay with something versus getting flooded by something, that window is going to be different for all of us. And this is where that compassion comes in. You know, it might be that today you stay with something for a few seconds. And that's great. And then we move to something else. We move away for a little bit. And we come back for a few more seconds. And then we move away. Some days it might be a minute. Some days it might be a whole afternoon. Whatever it is for you, it's those repeated going in and feeling and being with. It's not, and then moving away. That's, that may be the most compassionate, self-loving action you can take. 